So yesterday morning, they released a minigame Soul Wars. Some of you might remember this from pre-EOC. This was in popular demand, so Jagex decided to remake it. Although the rewards are a little bit different, it's pretty much the same game. So this is just going to be a short guide, and I try to make it as thorough as possible. So let's have a rundown of what Soul Wars is, what the objective of the game is, and strategies that may help you earn more points and effectively win the game. And afterwards, we're going to be taking a look at the rewards in the reward shop. So first of all, before you can even enter, you got to be at least level 40 combat and a total level of at least 500 plus membership. Now let's go over the two ways to get there. My preferred method is using a dueling ring to go to the Ferox Enclave. The teleport's going to bring you right around here, then you're going to want to run north to the exclamation point. And once you're down here, it's pretty self-explanatory. All you gotta do is go for the yellow portal. And now we're in Soul Wars. And there's actually two ways to get here. The other way is through Edgeville. As you can see, I can click out and go back to Edgeville through this portal. And it's just right near the yew trees. Before you can actually start the game, you have to speak to Nomad and go through a small tutorial. And of course, you're gonna have to be in one of the worlds labeled Soul Wars. I don't feel like this tutorial fully explains the objective. This tutorial mainly shows what you do with the fragments and how you collect them. It kind of leaves out the PvP aspect, which is a pretty important part of the game. So you're pretty much just killing a couple ghosts, collecting the fragments, taking them to the obelisk, and then you're pretty much done with the tutorial. I'm going to be giving away a bond. All I want you guys to do is like, subscribe, and comment down below with your RSN and the word bond, and I'll be rolling out the giveaway in a few days. And this is a very important tip, in order to have the ammo collecting properties of an accumulator, an attractor, or an assembler, all you gotta do is use one of those items on the Nomad, and your ammo will be preserved as if you had one on. And in my case, I'm using a Max Cape, which also works. In the beginning of each game, you start on your base, and there's two supply tables. One has bandages. Each bandage heals 10% of your total health, and also restores 100% run energy, and they aren't stackable, so you can't combo eat with them. So the food is kinda underpowered, and there have been complaints about how fast it can heal you, especially in multi-way combat. Or at least that's what Wiki says. In fact, these bandages actually heal 20% of your total HP, and without any combo food, they're still underpowered. However, if you do notice somebody on your team being focused, you can use the bandage on them and it will heal them. I would recommend using two potions and the rest bandages. Also, as soon as you leave your base, there's a secondary base that has bandages, more potions, but also has barricades and explosives. The barricades are used to block the opponent, and explosives are used to blow up the barricade instantly. However, you can destroy the barricades with combat. Most people opt to not use the explosives because it's kind of a waste of inventory space. And every single time you die, you get turned into a ghost and sent to a little box, kind of like a prison. You're turned into a ghost for about 10 seconds, so the most efficient thing to do is start grabbing the bandages and the potions now. Then once you turn into a human, you can walk right back out and start fighting again. The primary objective is to kill the other person's avatar, which is located on the other person's base. This is mainly how you get your best point reward. So the game will automatically end once one of the team's avatar dies 10 times, or if 50% of the player base leaves, the game will also automatically end. So the way to lower the opposing team's avatar's stats is to use the soul obelisk in the middle. And the way that works is you have to collect the soul fragments. And you get those by killing the ghosts in the surrounding areas. Or you can simply kill somebody and PK their soul fragments. Then all you gotta do is use them on the obelisk in the center. And this will begin to lower the stats of the opposing avatar. And every time you kill the avatar, it restores to full health and full stats. So basically you do this process 10 times and you win the game. And the way to restore your avatar's stats is to actually bury the bones of the opponents in the graveyards. The graveyards are the place where your ghost goes every time you die. There's one on each side of the map. Okay, here we go. Finally, we're in. So this was the very first day, my very first experience with Soul Wars. Just hours after it came out. And I waited over an hour to try to make it into a game, and I still couldn't get in. So what did I do? I went on Twitter. I asked ModAsh, what is the secret password to get into a game? He says, colon, colon, bank. Uh, this guy's been playing some private servers, jeez. And he also told me to come to World 328, which was a solid piece of advice because it allowed me to get in. The way it actually works is each team needs to have at least 10 people on it for the game to start. Once the number hits 10, there's a 2 minute countdown, then it starts. But if the number of players hits 60 per team, the game will start instantly. In this case, there's like 300 people in the world, and the world can only host one single game. And they realized pretty quick that this was a problem, so they had to add new worlds for Soul Wars. But now just a couple days after release, everyone migrated to the same world, and even then you barely see 60 per team. Now to go over my opinion on what I think about Soul Wars, and this was kind of a popular opinion even before it was released, most of the people that got to play the beta didn't really seem too impressed with it, because the PvP aspect does seem a little bit redundant. Actually killing people isn't the most productive thing you can do. You'd be better off farming the resources than filling the obelisk than going directly to the opponent's base and killing their avatar. 
I really don't like the concept of multi PKing. It's really not, in my opinion, too competitive, because if you get piled, you get targeted, you get targeted, you're just going to die. And I think it would be interesting if they had certain sectors that were multi and certain ones that weren't. And last of all, the way it's turning out is all the good people and all the tryhards go on one single team, and everyone tries to spam to get into that team, and they inevitably have a couple more people than the other side, and that's the team that usually wins. And if you choose to go in the green portal, it's going to always put you on the losing team. I sort of think that no matter what, you should have to pick the green portal. If you don't get to play with your friend, you don't get to play with your friend. But it would balance the teams out. So here's the reward shop. The XP rewards are similar to pest control, and one of the main reasons why it differs from pre-EOC is you used to be able to get Slayer XP. This is how the level 3s used to get 99 Slayer back in the day. And I believe summoning as well, I could be wrong. And the second tab is for imbuing rings. They didn't remove the Nightmare Zone imbuing ability. This is just an alternative if you don't want to actually do Nightmare Zone. And last of all, the final tab. The first item being the Soul Wars Cape. In this game, it costs 2,500 tokens and is just purely aesthetic and it's kind of like a thing to flex. Whereas in pre-EOC, it was the best in slot prayer cape with 12 per bonus. On this game, I don't foresee anyone wasting their points on it. Next of all is a pretty unique item. I haven't really researched it a lot, but it's called an Ectoplasminator and it gives you prayer XP while killing ghosts, similar to how Bone Crusher works when you kill things that drop bones. I may do a future video on that one. And last of all, the thing I'm going to be spending my points are on these crates called Spoils of War. They give you random loot similar to the crates in Barbarian Assault. This is also where you get the pet from, and I don't think Jagex released the odds of the rarity of the pet yet. And as you can see on my screen, somebody just got the pet. It's pretty cool looking. So these are the first five crates that I bought. I sort of opened them slowly. Our first one was only 52k. The next one was worth 59k. The next one was worth about 185k. The one after that, 113k. And the final price check of the first five crates, 565k. Then I came back and bought two more crates. Both of those combined, 138k, almost 139. Then I randomly bought a single one and it was 72k. And finally, I decided to buy three more, and it was worth 172k. So the overall profit from 11 crates was 949k. Then I decided to chuck the Armadillo crossbow back into the G that I bought a few hours ago, knowing that it probably went up. And sure enough, I made almost 1.6 mil from flipping it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely spent the extra time to get a little bit more meticulous detail in this video. Let me know if there's any important details that I missed, and I'll pin it at the top of the comments. I did my best considering I never even played this game in pre-EOC, so hopefully I didn't leave anything out. Let me know if you got any luck opening the crates, if you got any pets or anything like that, and I'd appreciate if you guys go follow my Twitter. I recently just made the account and I'm completely new to the platform. It'd be nice to see how many supporters we can get. So check me out on Twitter at NocturnalRS1 and drop a follow. And as of today, I'm going to be rebuilding my CC, so make sure to stop by NocturnalRSCC, and I'll see you guys in the next one.